Hi, I'm Jan and I'm presenting MPCNet, a first principles guided policy search. When thinking about methods to control unstable systems, one of the, pop one of the popular approaches is model predictive control. Model predictive control is nowadays widely used in motion control and its ability to recompute motion plans online at a high rate makes it very robust against disturbances. However, it is computationally intense because an optimal control problem needs to be solved online at every time step. On the other hand, data-driven approaches have been shown have shown remarkable successes over the last years. In particular, reinforcement learning can discover new kinds of behaviors, yet it is very sample inefficient. Imitation learning is one way to boost the sampling efficiency by being able to learn from guiding demonstrations. At runtime, data-driven approaches are typically less computationally intense because networks have been pre-trained and the evaluation of those is much faster. Our work starts from the assumption that we already have a model and an optimal controller for it, but it might be too slow to execute on the real system. So we are thinking about how can we learn an optimal a controller from our optimal solutions and distill the MPC algorithm in one um, feedback network that can be then evaluated much faster at runtime. The guidance from MPC samples allows us also to respect constraints in a principled way. Let's take a step back and look at imitation learning. Imitation learning works by providing the learning system with a set of samples, for example a human demonstrator, and the system will try to imitate or copy the behavior of the expert demonstrations. There are two ways how to do this. One, imitate the actions of the expert as close as possible, so try to minimize the distance between the actions of the learner and the actions of the demonstrator. On the other hand, there's also the stream of work of inverse reinforcement learning or inverse optimal control, which try to first infer a value or cost function and then optimize this learned cost function. There are a number of difficulties with imitation learning. For example, there's typically a distribution mismatch of states that are shown by the demonstrator and those states that are actually encountered by the policy that is learned. Also, there's often a domain adaptation to overcome because the body of the demonstrator is not the same as the body of the learner, which might be a robot, for example. Furthermore, in many setups, the teacher or the demonstrator actually adapts to the prog current progress of the learner. So the teacher demonstrates something that is closer to the current policy of the learner, which makes the demonstration of the expert not optimal anymore. Therefore, old demonstrations are typically not um, valid anymore and cannot be reused for learning the current policy. Finally, there is often no direct encoding of constraints in an imitation learning setup. Our idea is to use imitation learning in combination with optimal control as a policy search algorithm. We start with the following. So MPC solves usually an optimal control problem that consists of um, final and intermediate cost constraints about dynamics, and further constraints on states or inputs. It is also known that the optimal solution to this, to this problem satisfies the following relation. The optimal control U star is the minimum of the quantity called control Hamiltonian, calligraphic H, sometimes also known as the Q function. The control Hamiltonian H consists of quantities that are either directly related to the optimal control problem or that are anyways computed by the optimal control solver, such as Lagrange multipliers for constraints and um, the value function of the problem for, the optim for optimal states. Now our idea is to inject a parameterized policy for our inputs into the control Hamiltonian and simply minimize this control Hamiltonian for a distribution of states with respect to the parameters of our, po of our parameterized policy. If this succeeds, the optimal parameters should yield an optimal controller. So to recap, what we try to find is the optimal parameters theta star that minimize the control Hamiltonian over the distribution of states. And this is the advantage that once we have found those optimal parameters, this directly leads to the optimal control, as we've established in the previous slide. And there's no more additional cost function tuning needed on the policy learning side, because this, the policy loss function, drops out automatically. Furthermore, 
The control Hamiltonian includes and, and explicitly encodes constraints in the problem. And we can also query the MPC oracle, the MPC demonstrations, at any state that we would like. Furthermore, since the MPC is not aware that any learning is performed on it afterwards, it is always providing us with optimal policies that which can be reused time and time over again. They are not adapted to the student. The control flow of, flow of our algorithm is as follows. The MPC is on the data generation side. So it works by generating a random sampling, we sample a random starting point, compute the optimal trajectory for a predefined horizon, and then take the necessary values that allow us to compute a Hamiltonian into a replay buffer. So we example, for example, we sample at a fixed frequency state, Lagrange multipliers, value function derivatives. Then from this replay buffer, the MPC net algorithm, the policy search uh, module, samples a random batch of um, those tuples, computes the control Hamiltonian for uh, those states that have been sampled, and performs a gradient descent step. Pretty much like any supervised learning algorithm would do. So what about distribution mismatch? Well, how we address this in our case is we allow the MPC at the beginning to drive the system entirely such that it remains stable. As the controller, the learned controller becomes more advanced, it is given more and more weight by decreasing uh, this alpha parameter and thereby it gets more of a say in which states are being uh, solved for by the MPC. Therefore, as we progress in learning, the sampling becomes much more and more on policy and thereby reducing the distribution mismatch. Results. We show that less than 10 minutes of MPC demonstration data already generate enough data to learn a feasible and stable controller. The Hamiltonian loss compared to the normal control mimicking loss improves constraint satisfaction. In the video, we can see that there are, it is possible to co um, control different gates such as trotting. walking gait. We can also command the robot to yaw around its axis or to walk a couple of steps forward. Also longer motions are possible to stabilize with our learned controller. Another idea that we are exploring in this work is to use a mixture of expert network instead of a standard nonlinear perceptron. The idea is that different individually uh, trained or individually contributed experts can specialize on different parts of the state space since our walking robot is also a system which exhibits multiple modes of operations corresponding to the contact states. There is also a gating network trained alongside with all the experts that decides which, which experts output to choose at different times and states. We can show that the switching between different experts coincides precisely with different contact configurations on the robot. Furthermore, choosing specific experts for specific contact configurations further reduces the, reduces the constraint satisfaction, since a given expert can focus specifically on satisfying all the constraints for a specific mode, for example, not applying contact forces to swing legs. In conclusion, we show that MPCNet is an efficient, way to train a feedback policy from MPC demonstrations. The policy search loss function is naturally appearing and does not require any additional tuning. We showcase that this controller can stabilize a quadrupedal robot with different gates from less than 10 minutes of demonstration data. Of course, there are also some drawbacks to this method. For example, we rely that on the fact that we have a well-tuned MPC algorithm in the first place and our performance is limited by this algorithm. So if, this, if our MPC falls into a certain local minima, our learned controller will do the same. Furthermore, there's also no additional um, principled exploration mechanism, so we cannot hope to discover new kinds of behaviors. However, already the increased execution speed allows us to run the learned controller on onboard robot systems and possibly at a much faster rate than any MPC would have run there. Our code is online available. Thank you very much.